Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at three mid-range wide-angle lenses for Sony cameras. One by Sony, another by Takina, and the last one by Tamron. Stay tuned and let's get started. What held me back in the past from buying Sony mirrorless cameras was their lack of depth where it came to lenses. They had quite a few very expensive, very large options in the f2.8 range with their zoom lenses and also some very fast f1.4 lenses that were bulky and extremely expensive. There are also not a lot of wide angle lenses in general, with the exception of their 16 to 35 option, which is also a very large lens. You did, of course, have the option of it getting their f4 lens, but that's a very slow lens. Today's comparison shows that things have changed in this department. Today, we are going to be looking at the Sony f1.8 20mm lens that just got released uh, last week, as well as the older Takina 20mm f2 lens that was out last year, and finally, the Tamron 17 to 28mm f2.8 zoom that came out a few months ago. Let's get started. Here you can see all three lenses, how they compare in terms of size when they don't have their lens hoods on. You can see that they are quite similar just in the size alone. While the Takina is the shortest of all the lenses, it's also the heaviest. The Sony 20 millimeter is the overall lightest lens by a fair bit. And the Tamron is the largest but most versatile lens being a zoom lens. In terms of the physical features of these lenses, the Takina is the most simple. On the outside of the lens, you have nothing that you can do other than manually focus when you want. The Sony, on the other hand, has an external aperture ring, which would be nice to have in all of their lenses, but this is much appreciated. You can also turn this into a clickless or a click aperture ring so that you can have some tactile feedback from it or turn it off if you're using it in video. It also has an external option button that I personally use to switch into eye focus mode but that can be turned into anything you like. It has the autofocus and manual focus button, which is on most Sony lenses. And of course, you also have the ability to manually focus when you want. The Tamron has the ability to zoom between the focal lengths of 17 millimeters and 28 millimeters. Other than that, this lens has no other features other than a focus ring. Next, let's have a look how these lenses work with video outside. So this is the depth of field that you get when you're using the Sony uh, f1.8 20 millimeter lens. You see that the back, I have nice separation when I am doing my video and uh, everything looks fantastic. The focus speed is very quick. I can move around and it will keep up with my movements, move in nice and close, it catches up right away. Very handy. Now what you're seeing is the Tokina 20 millimeter f2 lens using it on the uh, Sony a7R 4 and uh, we'll see how well it keeps up with my movements wherever I'm going. Um, the one thing I couldn't do with this one is put a ND filter on it because I don't have one that's 62 millimeters, which is what this one requires. The other ones are 67. So you get a similar uh, depth of field in the back as you do in the uh, 1.8, but it should be a little better on the uh, Sony. So finally, I'm testing out the Tamron 17 to 28 f 2.8 on the Sony a7R 4 and I'm moving around so that you can see how well it keeps up with the focus as well as how well or how much depth of field or blurring we get in the back while we're recording. It's quite a significant difference from the Sony. I don't mind it like this when I want to, to see everything more in focus, but I certainly do enjoy the f1.8 when I want some separation, which is pretty rare in video. Um, this one does have an ND filter on it, and uh, so it should be nicely balanced. One thing I forgot to mention about the uh, 17 to 28 is that you actually do get a little bit of a wider field of view, which can be also very nice to have. So uh, we'll see how that looks different between that and what is 20 millimeter on the f2.8 17 to 28. There's not a huge amount of difference, but you can see that there is a little. So that's 20 millimeters, that's 17 millimeters. Not a huge amount. While we're looking at video, let's have a look how these lenses work inside. To show you what these lenses are like to use inside with video, I've set my camera up with a shotgun mic. 
so that I'm relatively close to the camera and you can also see how the focus works and how quiet it is when I'm moving around inside my studio slash house. So if I move back and forth with the Sony, you can see it's focusing on my eyes as it should and there's no focus motor noise because it's designed specifically to be quiet. Again. Now you're seeing the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter lens set to 20 millimeters. Of course it's an f2.8 lens at best, so this is a little darker than the other, but I will make it brighter in post. But as you can see, there is no focus motor noise as well. It's very quiet, even with the microphone right beside the lens itself. Now finally, we're taking a look at the Tekina 20mm f2 lens and to, to compare it to the other two. As I'm sure you can hear on this test, the focus motor is making a lot of jittering noise. While it focuses quite accurately, it's also very loud. If you're going to use this lens for a video, you'll have to use it either in manual mode or have to have your microphone far enough away from the camera where you can't hear the focus motor. Next, let's take these lenses outside and see how they do with photography. Okay, I apologize. I'm not actually taking you out with me photographing, but here's a few images that I took yesterday while it was sunny out. These images have had some processing done on them just so that they're not so contrasty and flat colored. If you look at these three images, you'll notice three things right off the bat. Their coloring is slightly different. So there's this, looks like there's a little bit more red on the Tekina. This is the Sony, this is the Tekina, and this is the Tamron. The Tamron and the Sony are quite similar when it comes to the color. You'll also notice that the fields of view have changed a little bit here. This is the Tamron again. So it's you'll notice by the buildings on the left-hand side over here that uh, you can see just the edge of the building. If we scroll back to the Tokina, those edges get even closer, almost zoomed in a bit, like almost like a maybe a 22 millimeter instead of a, of a 20 millimeter. And then if we go to the Sony, it's actually the widest of the three. Why that is, I have no idea, but it's good to know. It's nice to have a little bit of extra width if you're gonna have a wide angle lens. Now, if I zoom into the image and we look at this uh, guardrail here, you'll notice this is very sharp. This is all at F8, all of these images. So this is the Sony at F8, and you'll notice that guardrail is very clear. Going to the Tekina, it's also quite crisp. Then if we look at the Tamron, the image is not as sharp as you'd like it to be. You'll notice in the sky, in the background, that it's quite, quite a bit sharper on the Tekina and also very sharp uh, when using the Sony. All of these images were taken using a tripod at f8. Now if I move over here though, this is where the actual image was focused on each of them. This again is the Sony, the Tekina, and again the Tamron, which in this case it's actually in focus because that's where the focus point was, which doesn't explain why it's not in focus when we moved over to the other side where we're looking at the, the railing. With this next image, I took some self-portraits in a half-decently lit area using the eye focus feature on my camera so that I could take photos of myself. Um, in this first image, I just want to show you the difference between vignetting with the Sony. So this is at f1.8. If I move to f2, there is less vignetting, even less at f2.8. And f5.6, there's none. With the Tokina, there's a little bit at f2, less at f2.8, and none after that. And with the Tamron, there is, uh, it's all, you can only do f2.8 f2 anyway, so there's virtually no vignetting at that point. Now, if I move into the center of the screen on my face at a 50% zoom, because it's embarrassing to be any closer than that, this is what it looks like at f5.6 with the Tamron on my eyes, focused on my eyes, perfectly sharp also perfectly sharp at f2.8. And the same goes for the Tokina at all focal lengths. It's extremely sharp even at f2 as you see here. See a little bit of separation from the back again. And now with the Sony, this is f5.6, f2.8, f2, and f1.8. Perfectly sharp in the center all the time.
Now moving to the lower left corner of the same image at f2.8, you'll notice that uh, with the Sony you get a bit of blur in the background with a little bit of depth of field. And then moving to the Tekina, it's similar, maybe a little bit more jagged. But then when you move over to the Tamron, you're getting quite a bit more blur, which is weird. Uh, it's similar to what happened with the last image, Tamron, Tekina, Sony. and. I've noticed that it's most pronounced on the lower left corner again. Um, I don't see much of a difference, maybe because there's not a lot to compare to in this corner. But if I go to the lower right corner, this is the uh, Tamron, Tekina, again a little jaggy, and then the Sony. Then when we move to f5.6, uh, keep a close look at the bricks again in the lower right hand corner. This is the Sony. That is the Tokina, and that's the Tamron. A bit of a slight difference in softness again, the Tamron being the softest, and the other two being similar in their sharpness in the corner. Although the Tokina looks a little sharper, but it may be because of that um, jagginess that I was talking about. I'm just moving this over to the lower left again at f5.6. Here we are with the Sony, the Tokina, and again, a little bit more blurring at f5.6 in the Tamron lens on the lower left corner. In this last image, um, I'm indoors at a place called the National Arts Centre in Ottawa, and I'm going to be focusing on the text that's down here at the bottom of the image. When I scroll through the image, the one thing you'll notice, uh, notice right off the bat, a little bit of vignetting, but more so the differences in the uh, field of view, which I'll highlight a little more in a second. So moving back to my original first image, I'm going to move into 100%. So this is using the Tamron at f2.8 and it's uh, nice and sharp at 100% on that text. This is at f5.6, a touch sharper, which is nice. Now um, this is also at f8 now, which is uh, even sharper. Now this is the Tokina at f8. Tekina at f5.6, at f2.8, and f2. A so little bit of a blur there when you get to f2 with the Tekina. Now with the Sony 20 millimeter, this is at f1.8. It's noticeably sharper even at f1.8 than the Tekina. And at f2, f5.6, and f8, which ironically, f8 is slightly soft. I'm not sure if that's uh, a focusing issue that f caused by me or if it's a, a problem with diffraction when you get to f8 but I'm not quite sure. Anyways it's uh, still relatively sharp but not as sharp as that f5.6. Now finally with the same image I've moved over to the left lower corner and I'm uh, at 100% on this image and this is the Tamron at f5.6 20 millimeters and this time there's not really any blurring to mention on the lower corner. Moving to the Tokina on the other hand, there is a little bit of, uh, of a kind of a smear type blur that uh, is noticeable. And then with the Sony, you uh, at f5.6 again as they all are, there is also very little blurring of any kind. So the corners, I checked all the other corners and they're quite similar to the, what you see here. Now, the one thing I can illustrate quite clearly now is the difference in the focal lengths of all of these images. What you're looking at here is the uh, Sony lens at 20 millimeters, obviously. And uh, you'll notice if you look at the edges of the image, you'll see how wide the image actually is. Now, this is the Tamron, so you'll notice I've zoomed in a tiny bit, and now the Tekina, it's moved in even closer. So again, that's the Tekina, this is the Sony, this is the Tamron. Sony having the widest of all of the 20 millimeters. So what's my final verdict on these three lenses? Well, to start off with, I have to say that I really like all three of them. I started off with the, to the Tokina as my first wide angle lens on a Sony camera about a year ago. And I've always loved it since. It has very little distortion and optically it's just a great lens. If I had to give it one fault, the only thing I don't like about it is the chattering noise that it makes when you're shooting video. But again, that doesn't really matter if you're shooting with a microphone that's off of your camera. 
The Tamron, on the other hand, the 17 to 28 is probably one of my favorite walk around lenses now. I do like wide angle, the wide angle point of view. So it's a great lens to have with you and is very light. You can have it on you all day and it doesn't bother you one bit. And it's nice and sharp. But if I had to pick one lens out of the three, the one that I would buy if I didn't have any of these would be the Sony F1.8. The reason that I like it so much is that it's slightly faster. The focus is a little bit more accurate, so it's sharper at all focal lengths. It's quieter and it has all these bells and whistles in terms of manual controls all over the lens. So because of this, it just feels like a better lens overall. What I'm going to do in the end is I'm going to keep both the Sony lens and the Tamron lens anyways, since the Tamron lens is also a bit more versatile for me when shooting events. So as you can see, I really like that lens. It's despite any flaws that I may have found when I was testing it out uh, very closely, I don't see these problems when I'm actually using it in the field. So what have been your experiences so far and what do you think of these lenses? Please let me know in the comments below what you've found in the past. I know that um, I didn't include in this review anything from the Sony 16 to 35 f2.8. The reason for that is it's just simply too heavy for my liking and it's also a much more expensive lens than the three that I have here. Therefore, I didn't include it. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. Please let me know if you have any other things that you'd like me to test on this and I can answer your questions in the comments. Thanks very much and we'll see you in the next video.